All right, good afternoon. My name is Angel Palermo with the Center for Multicultural and Community Affairs, and I'm one of the advisors to the MedStart program. And I'm really excited to have everyone um, uh, be here for this presentation. Uh, it has been an exciting journey the past three years. I think it's three years, right? Uh, and I'll never forget when Ed walked into my office and had an idea, and uh, we went for it. And, uh, and I want to introduce to you uh, the most recent coordinators of the MedStar program. Amar Parikh is currently a second year medical student. Uh, and for the past year, he has served as the co-director of the MedStar program. He graduated from Duke University in 2009, where he majored in English and biology. At Duke, he founded a program called the Health, Health Arts Network at Duke, a volunteer initiative that, Duke, that allows Duke students to bring their performing arts talents to pediatric patients' bedsides at Duke Children's Hospital. Amr is currently interested in pediatrics and ENT and hopes to continue working with children throughout his career. Um, his co-director, Ann Armstrong, is also a second year medical student. And um, in 2008, she received a BA in chemistry from Princeton University, where she engaged in basic science research on Alzheimer's disease and led a program that brought science activities to inpatient pediatric hematology oncology patients at Bristol Myers Squibbs. Children's Hospital. She previously worked as the program director at Camp Holiday Trails, a camp for children with chronic illnesses and special health needs in Charlottesville, Virginia. She hopes to pursue a career in teaching and academic medicine with a clinical focus in pediatrics or internal medicine. Clearly, for some medical students interested in pediatrics, MedStart is definitely a rotation uh, that should be considered. So without further ado, Ann and Amr. Thank you so much, Angel, and thank you everyone for coming today. Um, Amr and I have really enjoyed our past year as the co-directors of the MedStart program, and we're excited to tell you more about the program today. Um, some of you may be familiar with MedStart already, but for those who are not, we're going to begin with a brief overview of the program, how it started, um, and, the, and tell you about the interactive curriculum that we've developed for East Harlem Middle School students. Um, we'll then be presenting results from some ongoing research projects that we've uh, been working on that examine the impact that MedStart has had on the middle school's participants as well as their caregivers and um, on the medical student volunteers. Before we begin, though, we wanted to highlight the motto, motto of our program, Health, Knowledge, Power. Um, we really feel that those three words define what we're trying to accomplish, and we hope that by the end of our presentation you all, all agree. So MedStart began as a week-long summer camp program, and it's since expanded to year-round programs that all have the same fundamental goals, to inspire underserved students with an interest in science and medicine with the hope that they begin to think more broadly about their futures and consider careers in the health professions, as well as to improve their understanding of chronic illnesses that are endemic to East Harlem um, so that they may leave the program with the knowledge and tools to improve their own health and the health of their community. Uh, all of our programs are completely free to all participants. That includes meals, t-shirts, and transportation costs, um, so that we make sure that they're completely accessible financially to all families. Um, uh, sorry, We're very fortunate in that we can hold our programs here at Mount Sinai, and we can take advantage of the amazing resources of this institution to put together a really interactive and hands-on curriculum that we'll tell you more about. Um, one of the most valuable and important resources, though, that we have at our disposal is the Med uh, Mount Sinai student body. Um, each year at the summer camp and the year-round programs, medical and graduate students volunteer as, to teach activities or as mentors, which helps us enable us to fulfill one of the most important goals of our, of our program, which is to facilitate mentoring relationships between medical students and middle school participants. Um, as we, the program grows, we're continuing to try to find ways to expand those mentoring relationships so that they, you know, may be sustained outside of the program as well. Um, before we talk about, to you about the specifics of MedStart, we wanted to highlight why we think it's such an important and needed program for the East Harlem community. Um, so, as you, as you can see here, East Harlem residents are on average younger than the rest of New York City, and almost half do not have a high school diploma, which is about two times the rate of the rest of Manhattan. Um, limited access to primary care physicians and basic health services, along with poverty, unemployment, poor access to fresh foods, and many other factors contribute to East Harlem residents experiencing higher rates of diabetes, obesity, asthma, and many other chronic health conditions. Um, I know that's something that we're, we're all very familiar with being here at Mount Sinai, but we thought it was an important point to emphasize. Um, these educational and health disparities are obviously very complex and difficult to address, but um, we really feel that hoping for any real change requires beginning to make efforts in any way possible. 
So that's where MedStart comes in. Uh, the program was founded in 2009 by two then first year medical students, uh, Edward Chu and Melissa Schneiderman, who are here today. Ed and Melissa saw that within Sinai's many programs that reach out to the East Harlem community, there were no projects focused on middle school students. They realized that by reaching out to some of East Harlem's youngest residents at an age when they're at a very impressionable point in their development, they might be able to affect some changes in students' health behaviors as well as their attitudes towards science, medicine, and their own education. Um, MedStart began as a branch of the InnerWorks program, which is a national organization that hosts science and engineering camps for middle school students at college campuses. But because they were aiming to focus on health and medicine, Ed, Melissa, and the other first-year students who were on the executive board had to design the curriculum entirely independently as they shaped the program. Um, in that first summer, 40 medical me uh, middle school students participated, as well as 20 medical student volunteers. Um, the first camp summer camp was a great success, and with such strong institutional support here at Sinai, the program separated from InnerWorks in 2010, and under the leader leadership of Romit Bhattacharya and Samantha Zuckerman, um, it was renamed MedStart. Um, Romit, Sam, and their executive board developed and refined the curriculum further, and they also expanded the program's uh, capacity significantly with 57 middle school students participating and 35 medical student volunteers. So that brings us to the 2011 summer camp, which Amr and I were directors of, and it was held this past August. Um, the majority of our curriculum was consistent with the first two summers of the program, but we, but MedStar 2011 did focus more on health behaviors and lifestyle choices and how they can influence students' health. Um, and we'll tell you more about those activities in some later slides. We also expanded the enrollment somewhat with 65 middle school students participating. And we aimed to involve more of the graduate school by bringing in more volunteers. And we also introduced some new um, activities that were sort of focused on introducing students to science and medical research as a possible career. So before we give you an in-depth overview of the MedStart curriculum, um, we wanted to just provide a breakdown of this med the students who participate in MedStart. So um, since one of the fundamental missions for us is to improve health education within East Harlem, um, we obviously spent most of our time recruiting students from this community. So we worked with local schools and community organizations um, to recruit participants. And um, as you can see here, um, about, uh, about three quarters of our, of our participants either lived in East Harlem, attended an East Harlem middle school, or both, um, with 91% living or attending a school, attending school in Harlem. Um, I think it's also important to point out that about a quarter of our students are from uh, households where, where that are predominantly Spanish speaking. And then if you look at the, um, the gender and the age, break, uh, age breakdown, you'll see that um, the, the campers were distributed across all years of middle school with the most prevalent group being students who just finished the sixth grade. Um, and the male to female ratio was, well, to female to male was about two to one. Two to one. So there, um, two thirds of the students were females, which is not something that we aimed for in our recruitment. It just probably reflects the students who chose to, to apply to the program. So as Ann said, the basic goal of the program is to empower East Harlem youth with the knowledge that they need to change their own health outcomes. And the way we do this is through our cutting edge groundbreaking curriculum. The curriculum is really the heart and soul of MedStart, and without that, we wouldn't be where we are today. So just to give you a brief overview of the general structure of the camp, the camp is split into five days, and each day focuses on a distinct theme or an area of health and medicine. Um, in order to emphasize an interactive and collaborative approach to learning, we split our campers into 12 teams of approximately five to six students each, and each team was led by a student mentor. And the reason we chose this ratio is because we wanted to maximize the amount of interaction that the students would have with their teammates, as well as maximize the bond that they would develop with their medical student mentor. Um, so our curriculum is an innovative approach of three primary components. The first is brief lectures that serve as a general overview of what the students will be encountering throughout the day, um, hands-on activities, as well as team-based missions. So each day we start out with a brief morning lecture, and then we would proceed to the hands-on activities. So these were designed to be as interactive and as engaging as possible. So instead of passively observing a picture or a diagram on a whiteboard of an organ system, we would give our kids actual organ specimens to hold, examine, and dissect in their own hands. Instead of teaching students what CPR stood for or what it means, we actually certify them in this life-saving procedure. And we think this is what really makes MedStart unique because we take interactivity to the next level. And this is what makes MedStart such a rare and engaging opportunity for our campers. 
So after the core activities and lunch, our students would then apply what they learned in the lecture and the activities and engage in a friendly, competitive, team-based mission that would reinforce what they had learned throughout the day. So in the next few slides, I'm just going to walk you through the basic structure of each individual camp day so you can see how we split the different areas of focus across the week. So day one is in many ways the most exciting day. That's when we get to meet our campers for the first time, and that's when they get a chance to introduce themselves to each other as well as their medical student mentor for the week. So we began the camp with an introduction to what it's like to be a doctor. So students first learned how to take a basic patient history, and our medical student volunteers would then run through various role play scenarios to reinforce their patient ta history taking skills. Our campers then worked with actual stethoscopes and BP cuffs and learned how to measure vital signs. So these were 8th, 7th, and 6th grade students learning how to measure blood pressure, take various pulses, and uh, examine the respiratory rate. They then got to practice these techniques during a very exciting vital signs relay race mission that took place in the afternoon, where they got to show off their newfound vital signs taking skills. So day two was the start of our organ-based systems learning. Our approach to this is another aspect of what makes MedStart so unique. So instead of just teaching the students how the pulmonary system works, we actually put it in the context of a chronic health condition prevalent in East Harlem. So in this case, it was asthma. So they learned not only how the pulmonary system normally works, but how it's pathologically affected by chronic health conditions. So for our activities that day, we taught our students the anatomy of the lungs in an activity called What Do Lungs Really Look Like? So again, just, just emphasizes the fact that they were actually holding lung specimens in their hand, actually tracing uh, the different bronchioles and examining how the respiratory system actually looks and feels in the human body. Um, our campers were then also able to see firsthand a difference between cadaveric and pathologic specimens. So they were able to visually observe what a healthy lung looks like versus a chronic smoker's lung. They also had a chance to participate in a human simulator workshop where we had um, residents from the Department of Anesthesiology teach students how to intubate patients. For the afternoon mission, called Build Your Own Airway, we handed our campers normal arts and crafts items, such as vacuum tubes, um, pipe cleaners, and balloons, and challenged them to integrate what they had learned about the anatomy of the pulmonary system that very morning, and had them build their own model of a human airway. So on day three, we continued our organ systems-based learning, and we focused on the GI system. And again, we situated this in the context of the chronic health condition relevant to the GI system, which is diabetes and obesity. We again led our students through guided tours of the GI system in an activity called AO Guts, and we had them interact with actual GI specimens. Campers also participated in a clinical correlate activity which focused on diabetes. So our campers learned firsthand what insulin is, what the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is. They also learned how patients use glucometers to measure their blood sugars. And perhaps most importantly, they learned how um, good exercise and healthy eating habits can prevent or delay the onset of diabetes. For the afternoon mission, we wanted to help our campus understand that despite the limited healthy eating options available in East Harlem, it is still possible to find neighborhood food vendors that offer food, healthy food that's fresh and cheap. So to illustrate this concept, we gave each team $10 and we challenged them. We said, go out to neighborhood bodegas and work with your team to come up with the healthiest meal for the lowest cost. We were then privileged to have Angel Palermo from CMCA and Michelle Sante from Medical Education visit each team and then judge their meal based on healthiness and cost effectiveness. As you can tell from the pictures, our students really enjoy this particular mission and it's a great way to apply what the students had learned throughout the day about the GI system but in a very practical and neighborhood specific context. So on day four, we came to the cardiovascular system and this is a very, very exciting day for many of our students because the heart is such an intriguing organ to work with. Uh, to begin the day, again, we um, did an activity called Hearts in Real Life, where campers got to hold actual sheep hearts, hearts in their hands and then use probes to trace the normal path of blood flow through each of the hearts' chambers. Um, we were then able to procure several EKG machines from the company Medtronic, and in an activity called the Electrifying Heart, students were able to um, see how EKGs were taken and then even learn the basic principles that physicians use to analyze and read EKGs, which is pretty advanced stuff for middle school students. Uh, the day culminated with a mission called A Day in the Life of a Red Blood Cell. And in this mission, each student pretended that they were a red blood cell, and they traveled together in teams throughout different rooms that we had set up on the 13th floor just to give them an idea of how blood travels throughout the body. So our final day was really exciting. That's where we brought everything together. So they were certified in the morning in CPR, and we then conducted case-based missions throughout the afternoon that required students to integrate and synthesize all the knowledge they had gained throughout the week, but in a clinical setting. 
So we had our medical student volunteers come in as standardized patients. So they would come in with a chief complaint. Our superstar campers were then able to come up with a full patient history, measure vital signs, and even come up with a differential diagnosis depending on the symptoms that the students presented with. So it was really an inspirational thing to see how these students came in on day one having little to no exposure to science and medicine, but then by day five they were diagnosing the very medical students that had, teaching, that had been teaching them throughout the entire camp. Um, as Ann mentioned, one of the focuses we had this year was to increase the presence of the graduate school. So under the direction of Dr. Yasmin Hurd, we had uh, several activities run by graduate students where students took tours of labs and, used, and learned how to run DNA gels. And at the end of the day, we had a graduation ceremony where we recognized all of our outstanding campers and recognized the teams that had earned the most points throughout the week in missions and on behavior. So one of the changes that we really wanted to emphasize this year was the integration of a healthy lifestyles theme uh, throughout the camp. As you know, many of the chronic health conditions that we address in the MedStar program are, are precipitated by poor eating habits and lack of exercise. So to that end, we wanted to give our students an understanding of how changing health habits and improving them for the better can actually delay or prevent the onset of chronic health conditions. So the way we went about doing this was we incorporated physical fitness activities at the end of each day's schedule. We then made sure that the meals and snacks that we served to the students were much healthier than in past years. And this was really an effort on our end to try to introduce students to healthier eating options within East Harlem. Because as you know, it's, it's pretty jam-packed with fast food restaurants and unhealthy eating options. So this is just a sample of some of the uh, ways we integrated this theme throughout the camp. Um, on Tuesday, we were actually proud to form our first ever partnership with the Mount Sinai Adolescent Health Center. So we brought the students over to the center and we gave them a guided tour of the facilities. And we told them about all the many services that the health center offers East Harlem youth. They also participated in a yoga session, which was pretty interesting because a lot of them hadn't ever done yoga before. So they found that pretty thrilling. Um, on Wednesday, like I already told you, we had the healthy food shopping mission at local bodegas. We also had a chef from the Children's Aid Society come and talk to the campers about healthy after-school snack ideas. So he focused on smoothie making because that's a fun and easy snack that most kids can uh, really enjoy. And then we ended that day with a stickball clinic. So we took the students out to a nearby park and we had them learn the rules of stickball and play it for an hour or two, which is really fun just because the game is so rooted in New York City tradition. And then on Thursday, we had the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene provide our campers with food vouchers, and they were able to obtain fresh fruits and vegetables from a local farmer's market. Um, so we've already mentioned this before, but we just wanted to talk a little bit more about the involvement of medical students in MedStart. Um, as I said, it was a program that was founded by first-year medical students, and for the last two years, MedStart has engaged um, about a quarter of the rising second-year medical school class in its summer camp program. Um, that's making, that makes it one of Sinai's largest student-run initiatives. Um, additionally, as we've been expanding with the introduction of new year-round programs over the last year, we've been able to collaborate with multiple um, Mount Sinai student interest groups um, so that more and more students are getting involved in MedStart each year. And this is just a, a sample of the, the groups that we've been working with, and we have more even beyond this that we continue to build partnerships with. Um, since it was started in 2009, MedStart has relied on the support of many departments and individuals throughout Mount Sinai, both in the hospital and in the medical school. Uh, we received critical support from CMCA, with Angel being our main advisor for the program, providing assistance and advice throughout the planning stages. Um, and Dr. Stephanie Factor is our primary advisor for all of our research projects. Um, in addition to inviting us today, here today, Dr. Friedman, along with Michelle Sante and many others within medical education, have been really crucial to the success of the program from the very beginning. Um, and as you saw from the slides about the MedStar curriculum, uh, we are very fortunate to be able to utilize many of the resources like the Human Simulator Lab and Anatomy Dissections to create this interactive program for students. Uh, many of these activities would not have been possible without generous donations of materials and time from the departments of anatomy, pathology, anesthesiology, and many others, more than we've, we've even listed here. Um, overall, I think this just shows the degree of enthusiasm and, and support that MedStart has generated around Sinai after starting less than three years ago. It's also been very important for us to establish partnerships throughout the East Harlem community. Um, we work with a number of schools and community organizations in the area to recruit middle school students. The three that are shown at the top here are um, three that we worked with very closely during the 2011 camp to uh, recruit, recruit students. Um, probably one of the most rewarding aspects of 
for me personally of being involved in MedStart, and I think it was probably true for many others on the executive board, was the opportunity to go out into the community and talk to students and families and teachers. Um, it was, it's really been really great to hear from parents and from teachers about how excited they are about MedStart and how much they feel that it's really a needed program for their students and children. Um, and the organizations and, and businesses listed at the bottom of the slide are um, partnerships that we forged during the 2011 camp to incorporate the healthy lifestyles activities and healthier meals that Amr told you about. So we wanted just to highlight some of the attention that MedStart has received in the press during its first three summers. Um, this is an image that appeared in the New York Daily News with students from the 2010 camp in the simulator lab. And if you'll, if you'll bear with us, we have a, sh a brief clip from an, a news story on ABC News that aired in 2009 about the first program. If you've ever been with someone who's used emergency medical care, you know that knowing what to do can save a life. But flip side, not knowing what to do can make you feel powerless. Now a program to feel the power, literally life-saving classes for middle school students. This education reporter, Aura Metfarr. It opens up their airway and it helps them breathe. Life-saving techniques were the focus of the first ever free, week-long science and medicine summer camp at Mount Sinai Hospital. I'm learning how to tell vital signs um, with EKGs and like medical stuff, and it's real fun. With the cooperation of doctors, the camp was created by medical students from the Mount Sinai School of Medicine, specifically for middle school students. They learn about um, the respiratory system, they learn about the digestive system, they learn about the cardiovascular system, and then they become basic life support certified at the end. And I'm really happy for being here because not that many people get, get to have a chance like this. The students are all from East Harlem, where Mount Sinai is located, and there is a direct connection between some of their lives and the treatment of respiratory illnesses because this neighborhood has the highest rate of asthma in the nation. Met Saida Mercado has a sister with asthma. We had to put them to the doctor, um, to the emergency room, and, and they had to um, put the oxygen mask on her so she could breathe. And then to see asthma simulated on the mannequin and then treat it to see how we as doctors evaluate patients with asthma is something they can really relate to and they're really interested in doing it. It's a good basis for beginning in case some of these kids are interested in pursuing a medical career. At the end of the week, the middle schoolers also became certified in CPR. The Mount Sinai med students hope to run the camp again next year. In East Harlem, Mark McFarland, Channel 7, I will see you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the research projects that we've been using over the past few years to evaluate the efficacy of the MedStar program. Um, so the first major project that we've been embarking on for the past three years has been the Knowledge and Attitudes Project. And this has really formed the core of our data collection efforts over the past few years. Um, the first, we have two main aims with this program. And the first is to measure knowledge gains. We want to see how much knowledge the students gain in particular topics of health and medicine from the beginning of the camp and then by the end of the camp. Uh, the second aim that we have is to measure any changes in students' attitudes towards the careers in towards science and medicine, and just to see if the camp had anything to do with those shifts in attitudes. So these two projects, like I said, have really been the focus of our data collection efforts over the past few years. Uh, we also began two new projects, Ann and I, this past year. Um, Ann's project was called The Impact of MedStart on Medical and Graduate Student Volunteers, and my project was called Using the MedStart Program Model as a Health Education Intervention for East Harlem Caregivers. So I'll be talking to you in detail about all three of these projects shortly. So the first project that we'll talk about is the Knowledge and Attitudes Project. And our approach to this project was fairly straightforward. We administered a pre-camp knowledge survey and a pre-camp attitude survey on day one of the camp before the students had participated in any activities. And we then administered identical post-camp surveys at the very end of the camp after they had completed all the activities that were scheduled. Um, the knowledge survey had 20 questions, and these are multiple choice questions with one correct answer. And these questions covered various topics that we covered throughout the camp, such as physiology, heart disease, as well as diabetes. Uh, the post-knowledge survey, post survey was identical to the pre-camp knowledge survey. The only changes we made were to rearrange the question orders and scramble around the answer choices. The attitude survey was a 10-question survey that had 
Uh, several questions that address students' interest in science, their interest in careers as a scientist or in the medical field, uh, general confidence in school performance, and future educational goals. Sorry. So this is just a sample of the knowledge survey. Um, as you can see, the questions, I'll read sample question two with you. Uh, what action produces the heart sounds that we hear with the stethoscope? A, inspiration, expiration, B, opening of the heart valve, C, closing of the heart valves, D, respiratory rate, or E, CPR. So you can see that the language we used to construct these questions was fairly straightforward and understandable for that particular age group, but it still evaluated their conceptual understanding of heart physiology, which is something we focused on during the camp. And this is just a sample of the attitudes questions. We would ask very straightforward questions about their interest in science or, for example, their, an interest in career in a medical field. And we would use a Likert scale to evaluate their interest levels um, in response to these particular questions. So as you can see, the student scores increase across the board in nearly every single subject area. Overall test scores improved by roughly 25%. Physiology and first aid scores improved about, by about 40%. Um, diabetes and nutrition by almost 20% and heart disease uh, knowledge increases were about 15%. The only subject area, interestingly enough, that didn't see an improvement was asthma in the pulmonary system. And our theory is that students in this particular age group have encountered so many other students, friends and family members, or even themselves, that um, have asthma. So they have a much more, uh, a much stronger baseline familiarity with that disease as opposed to um, diabetes or heart disease, which is more commonly seen in elderly patients. So based on this data, we are considering ways to update the asthma and pulmonary curriculum to better reflect their higher baseline knowledge at the outset of the camp. So this slide is just demonstrating that the overall knowledge increases have been consistent year to year. So in 2009, you can see, and 2010, overall test scores increased by over 20%. And the 2010 topic-specific scores demonstrate a very similar pattern of knowledge acquisition. We also made an effort to evaluate um, returning campers' knowledge increases as opposed to new campers' knowledge acquisition. So as you can see, both new campers and returning campers did gain knowledge by the end of the camp in a significant way. But what's also interesting is that returning campers started off with a higher baseline knowledge and they ended with a higher baseline knowledge. So this suggests that repeated exposure to the curriculum really reinforces what they learn year to year. So as a result of this data, one of the things that our current executive board is considering is to come up with an advanced curriculum for returning camp members. And this way we can keep them mentally stimulated and engaged from year to year. Um, so in addition to improving participants' knowledge of health and disease, we've also seen gains in MedStart students' attitudes towards science and medicine. Uh, this is data from the 2011 summer camp that shows that after participation in MedStart, more students said that they were interested or very interested in science as well as in pursuing a career in science or medicine. Similar significant gains were also seen in the number of students who felt that they understood what scientists do, which is, uh, Amr mentioned, we did incorporate more um, activities this summer that focused on the role of research scientists and so that they left camp um, learning more about career paths that they might not have considered before. And this is data from the 2009 camp that again shows that similar gains have been uh, observed in students' attitudes um, previously in the MedStart program. Um, so now that we've shown that there's an immediate impact on the students who participate in MedStart, the next step for us is to determine whether these knowledge and attitudes gains are sustained beyond the camp program. We're working to develop um, longer-term surveys and other metrics to evaluate, evaluate whether the impact of MedStart persists into the school year um, and even as they move into high school and beyond. Um, as Amr will discuss later, MedStart is really growing into a year-round enrichment program and it's our hope that that will provide the foundation for more sustainable gains in students' knowledge and attitudes. Um, so now that we've seen the impact of the MedStart program on the middle school participants, in 2011 we decided to expand our research to get a more holistic view of how MedStart influences all those who participate. Um, Amr will tell you more about the, his project on the influence of a MedStart program on student, um, caregivers of students. But first I'd like to talk about um, results from our research on how the educational impact of MedStart on the medical and graduate student volunteers. 
Um, so not counting Amr and I, there were 33 volunteers who participated in the 2011 summer camp. As we've alluded to previously, there are multiple roles that volunteers can play in MedStart. Uh, mentors dedicate the last week of their summer break to the program, leading a team of four to six students through activities, teaching morning lectures, and facilitating collaboration and teamwork. Um, the activity lead leader position is more flexible with volunteers coming in and out throughout the camp week to teach individual activities from our curriculum. So one day they may be leading an anatomy dissection and the next they'll teach about diabetes or how an EKG works. Um, those of us who are on the 10-person executive board were involved throughout the planning stages of the program, working to design the curriculum um, and schedule and recruit participants. And we also had the opportunity throughout the camp week to teach and interact with students. So we distributed on anonymous online surveys before the start of the summer camp and after the week to all volunteers. Um, the surveys were aimed at gauging volunteers' expectations before the program, their reflections afterwards, and to evaluate for any changes in their awareness of East Harlem, their ability to work with middle school students, and their confidence as teachers and uh, health educators. So this, these pictures are just meant to highlight the different roles of MedStart volunteers. There's a mentor on the left with his team of students at graduation and an activity leader on the right teaching, um, some, showing some lung pathologic specimens, teaching about um, smoking and the effects of smoking and pollution. Um, so, so much of MedStart for the volunteers is really focused around being able to communicate information about health and disease in a way that middle school students will understand. And so that means removing the jargon and distilling difficult concepts down in a simple and understandable way. Um, what this graph shows is that um, volunteers felt more confident after MedStart in the, their ability to communicate health education information, both to middle school children and as well as to patients. And this shows a breakdown by the individual chronic illnesses that were the focus of our curriculum, um, as well as some of the most prevalent conditions that we will see as, as students and physicians. So as you can see, the volunteers felt more confident in their ability to educate patients about heart disease, hypertension, obesity, and asthma. Um, the diabetes was the only chronic illness that there was not a significant gain in students' confidence, um, and so that may just be a reflection that it's a somewhat more complex condition for students to teach. Um, Overall, these results reflect um, improvements in volunteers' confidence as health educators, uh, whether this is sustained beyond the program or whether it, it leads to actual improvements in their communication skills uh, remains to be seen, but I think it does suggest a possibility for MedStart to represent an opportunity that enhances medical students' education. Um, in addition to working with East Harlem Middle School students, uh, volunteers have the opportunity to interact with caregivers and, and go out into the community, um, especially those of us on the executive board. So this graph simply shows that MedStar fulfilled expectations of volunteers when it came to improving their understanding of East Harlem. Um, and we asked volunteers in the post-survey after the camp was over to rate the most important things that they felt they gained from involvement in MedStar. So what this table shows is that their responses differed by position in a way that was really made sense for their, their particular position. So for example, the mentors who spent a week with five, four to six middle school students felt that their most important gain was a better understanding of the needs of middle school children and how to address those needs. Whereas those of us on the executive board who spent a lot of time out in the community recruiting students and working with local organizations um, really felt that they especially, especially gained a greater understanding of the East Harlem community. Um, so I think this just shows that the different roles um, represent somewhat different educational opportunities for volunteers. And um, it's not shown in the presentation, but we also solicited some open-ended feedback from volunteers after the program um, to help with planning for next summer's camp. And one of the things that the new directors are working on is developing and expanding the training for volunteers so that they begin the camp feeling more prepared um, as teachers as well as in managing team dynamics and uh, working with middle, school, middle schoolers. Um, even though the focus of MedStart is always going to be on the East Harlem Middle School students that we work with, it's important, we feel, to enhance the experience for the volunteers as well. So another one of the key ways that we expanded this year was to include the caregivers of our MedStart students in our community outreach efforts. And our reasoning behind this was pretty simple. I mean, you could teach a middle school student as much as you want to about healthy eating and exercise, but when they go home, it's their caregivers, parents, and family members that are deciding what food goes on the table and how often they're going to go to the gym or to the park to exercise. So to that end, we wanted to include the caregivers within our outreach efforts so that they could then collaborate with their MedStart students to pursue and achieve whatever health goals that they set forth during the camp. So we held a MedStart health education session specifically for caregivers and family members of MedStart student participants. And it was held the Tuesday evening after the camp ended. 
And the reason that we chose this particular date is because we wanted to give the parents a chance to see the camp in action the week before. And we wanted to earn their trust and have them really believe in what the MedStart mission is before they commit to attending our first ever caregiver session. Uh, unfortunately, that weekend was when the hurricane hit New York City, so <laughs> we actually had to reschedule the session and push it back by a day. So unfortunately, there was a, a bit of drop off in attendance, or expected attendance, but we still had the caregivers of 15 MedStart students attend which is about a quarter of the camp, uh, along with 10 additional family members. So we had total 25 people attend the session, which is pretty good for a first time caregiver session. So in designing the session, what we wanted to do was we wanted to keep it fun, energetic, and entertaining. We, we figured that parents were either coming from work or coming with family members, and the last thing they wanted to do was to sit through any didactic teaching of material. So the way we set up the program schedule is that we had a group fitness session. So this was run by a fitness instructor from a program called Shape Up NYC, which is a phenomenal nonprofit organization that holds um, free fitness classes throughout New York City for anyone who wants to attend, no membership required. So we had a very energetic and entertaining lady come, and she led the caregivers through a Latin cardio Zumba hybrid fitness session. Um, and as you can tell by the picture on the bottom left, everyone really, really got into that. Um, we then proceeded into a healthy cooking workshop with uh, Chef Dave from the Children's Aid Society, who was the same chef that ran the smoothie making workshop in the camp the week before. And this was also a very, very exciting opportunity for the caregivers. They were able to help Chef Dave cook a healthy meal. He talked to them about healthy ingredient alternatives. And there was even a dialogue that opened up between the parents about the psychology behind dieting and why certain efforts to diet work and why some don't. And then we ended the session with a salsa dancing class because we wanted to keep the caregivers engaged, moving, and having fun. And this is actually run by our very own Mount Sinai medical students. So we had the Sinai Salseros come in and lead a salsa dancing class for the parents, and everyone had a great time. We then ended with free dinner from Island Salad. And Island Salad is a pretty special eatery located on 125th Street, and it's right in the middle of that fast food bubble. I think it's between a Popeyes and a McDonald's. So its mission is, is very relevant because what they're trying to do is offer healthy food alternatives to the fast food um, rampage that's present within East Harlem. So in terms of the research to evaluate the content of the session, we kept it again very straightforward and simple. We administered a single session in both English and Spanish after the session concluded, and we asked three questions for each activity. Had you participated in an activity like this before? Did you actually enjoy the activity, and would you participate in an activity like this again? Um, surprisingly, a majority of the caregivers had not participated in activities like this before, which is interesting just because East Harlem is the target of so many different health intervention programs. So the fact that this was the first time they had been participating in programs like these may, may suggest that parents trusted the MedStart name and were more willing to participate in a session if it was branded with the MedStart title. Um, as you can see, parents almost unanimously enjoyed every single activity. Um, and most importantly, 100% of the caregivers indicated that they would participate in a session like this again. Two of the key findings are on the right. We asked them, as a result of this session, do you plan to exercise with your MedStar student more often? 93% of the parents responded yes. And as a result of the session, will you work with your MedStar student to eat healthier? 100% of the caregivers responded yes. And it just goes to show you that it's possible now that caregivers will work with their MedStar student to really achieve the health goals that the students and us set in the camp. So this is just a sampling of the qualitative comments that we received from the caregivers about the session. As you can see, in general, the response was overwhelmingly positive. Um, one comment I do want to point your direction to is the comment fourth one down, uh, which says, please create a workshop on eating disorders. Bulimia is alive and well and spreading in East Harlem. Please help. So while we were a little distressed to hear that this might be a, a burgeoning issue within the community, what it did suggest to us is that caregivers really believe in the power and potential of MedStar to address urgent public health needs within the community for East Harlem students. And this is something that we're going to be taking into account in the future. And we'd really like to incorporate student input and caregiver input when we design the content of future caregiver sessions. So since the summer camp was such a huge success, we thought, why stop there? Let's, let's take MedStart throughout the entire school year, too. So what we did was we launched our first ever year-round program this past fall. Um, so in picking a theme for this program, we wanted to pick a theme that students would find interesting and exciting, but also something that we hadn't covered in the summer camp before. So we settled on sports and emergency medicine as the theme. And as you can see, one of our main, main goals was to retain the interactive nature of the MedStart model, because that's what made the summer camp so successful. 
So in terms of the format, we had four Saturday afternoon sessions from 2 to 4 p.m. right here at the School of Medicine. Um, we had each session was held every two weeks. So it began with emergency medicine on October 8th. Two weeks later was orthopedic medicine session and so on. And each session had a very specific focus that fit within the sports and emergency medicine title. We had a great turnout for our first program. We had 35 students enroll and we collaborated with several interest groups to make sure that these sessions would run smoothly. And they helped us design the activities and run the activities for each session. So one of the great things about this is that as we expand to different themes and incorporate different areas of medicine, we'll be collaborating with more and more interest groups within the medical school. So MedStar is not just expanding within East Harlem or with caregivers or medical students, but also within different breadths of discipline within the medical school as well. So this is just a collection of photos from the, the various sessions. The top left is probably my favorite photo ever. Um, it's a photo of a eighth grade student learning how to suture. And I think this is pretty amazing because most second year medical students don't know how to suture. I definitely don't. So to, to see an eighth grade student learning how to suture in 30 minutes, learning it well and really enjoying himself was a really inspirational thing for all of us to see. Uh, the top right is a picture of a Mount Sinai paramedic leading students through a tour of an ambulance. And the kids were really excited to get in the back of an ambulance, see what's actually in there. And they were also really excited to play around with the, the siren. Um, the bottom left is a picture from our orthopedic session, and that's one of our students learning how to make a plaster cast. And on the bottom right is a picture from our final session, which we focus on a cumulative review of the previous three sessions, but also wanted to focus on exposing kids to the path to medicine. One of the things that we want to expand this year is to really incorporate and emphasize how students can get into medicine and what steps they can take in high school and in college to pursue a medical career. So we had several physicians from East Harlem with deep ties to the community coming to speak to the kids and they were very, very enthralled with the presentations. Uh, we then ended with a cumulative review game in Jeopardy where students got to show off the knowledge they had accumulated over the last few sessions. So this is just some preliminary research results from the Sports and Emergency Medicine program. And in terms of how we went about administering the surveys, what we did was we administered one pre-session survey at the beginning of each of the first three sessions. And each survey had five questions, multiple choice questions, that would focus on questions that were relevant to that particular session's theme. We then had one post-session survey at the end of the last session that was an aggregate of the previous three surveys and put them all together into one comprehensive post-session survey. So as you can see, knowledge gains were consistent throughout all three areas of medicine uh, that we covered. Uh, students started off with a pretty high baseline knowledge of emergency medicine, which is impressive. They had an over 70% initial knowledge um, uh, exposure to emergency medicine, but there was still a statistically significant gain of about 15% in um, emergency medicine specific scores. Orthopedics and rehab medicine both increased by over 25%, and it just shows that students really did retain the knowledge throughout the weeks through subsequent sessions. So one of the things that we're very excited about with this year-round program is the potential for long-term knowledge retention. One of the drawbacks to the summer camp is that it's a one-time event. It happens for one week at the end of August, but it's hard to see how much knowledge the students retain in the months afterwards. By spreading out these sessions over the span of two months, we were able to reinforce the knowledge that the students learned at each given session, reteach it to them, review it with them, so that their long-term knowledge retention was improved over time. So just building off the success of our pilot year-round program, our 2012 executive board is launching several new year-round programs this semester. So our new executive board is led by current first-year students Benjamin Leitman and Ariana Whitkin, and they have several very exciting projects in the pipeline for the upcoming months. The first is called Neurology Day, which is actually happening next Saturday, February 11th from 10 to 3 p.m. right here at Mount Sinai. Their recruitment team has been working diligently to recruit 30, over 30 students from several East Harlem middle schools. And they're also collaborating with the Neurology Interest Group as well as the Community Health Improvement Project to help run the activities. Uh, we're gonna have a variety of neurology related activities which will include cow eye dissections, uh, examination of brain slices, and even learning how to recognize and respond to stroke and seizures. Um, this is going to be a great program and we encourage anybody interested in seeing how MedStart works in reality to come out and observe the session in action. Um, and some of the future programs that the directors have planned is a session called Sex, Drugs and Rock and Roll, which will hopefully happen in March of this year. And this will focus on some of the major health issues that middle school students face as they transition from adolescence to their teenage years. And they're also thinking of holding a surgery day in collaboration with the Plastic Surgery Interest Group and several others. 
So MedStar has been very fortunate to receive several awards over the past few years. Um, Ann and I were able to focus our efforts on putting this camp together because of the generous recognition and support by the Patricia Levinson Summer Research Fellowship. Um, we've also been honored to receive invitations to present at various conferences throughout the country. Uh, MedStar was selected for Blue Ribbon Recognition for Innovation and Research at the 2010 IME Education Research Day. And as you can see, we've also been invited to present at the American Public Health Association's conference two years in a row. And just recently, one of our co-directors, Samantha Zuckerman, delivered a presentation at the annual meeting of the American Association of Anatomists. So now I'd just like to talk to you briefly about some of the exciting big picture goals that we have in mind for the MedStar program. So our primary goal is really to pursue new sustainable funding sources. Up until now, MedStar has only been able to happen because of an overwhelmingly amount of uh, financial assistance from the Young Women's Division of the Auxiliary Board. We can't begin to share our appreciation for their generosity, as without their continued year-to-year -year financial assistance, we simply wouldn't be here talking about the success of MedStar today. We have now begun to identify new sustainable funding sources for MedStar 2012 and for the years ahead. Anne and I applied for and won a grant from the American Association of Anatomists, where we were awarded $3,000 to put towards this year's camp uh, budget. We also have several pending grants um, currently to various different um, associations, which will hopefully pan out and add more funds to our budget. Uh, we're also working on establishing a longitudinal study because we want to track the long-term progress of MedStar participants in a variety of ways. We want to see the students who attend MedStar actually go on to actively pursue the, any interest in medicine or science that they develop during the MedStar program. We're also working on finding ways to see if the program has had any effects on the long-term health habits as well. In addition, now that we have three years of cumulative MedStar data from the 2009, 2010, and 2011 summer camps, the previous co-directors are working on a comprehensive manuscript that will compile this data and also detail the implementation of the program. And finally, we're also beginning to compile our various activity templates into an official MedStar curriculum guide. And our hope is that this guide can serve as a means for packaging and exporting the MedStar program to other institutions that would like to start similar outreach programs for underserved communities. Um, so now that we're reaching the end of the presentation, uh, we just wanted to highlight our motto one more time, health, knowledge, power. Um, hopefully we've clarified how it reflects those three words. Um, the mission of MedStart is to empower youth from underserved neighborhoods uh, with the knowledge and tools to improve their own health and the health of their community while also providing them with the opportunity to explore a career in science and medicine. Um, there are currently no other free programs like MedStart that cater specifically to underserved New York City middle school students um, who are interested in, in science and medicine. Um, the impact of MedStart has already been significant with nearly uh, 200 underserved students participating is, since the program began with the help of over 100 medical student volunteers. And we're continuing to expand and grow each year, so stay tuned for MedStart 2012. Um, with that, we'd just like to thank Dr. Friedman, who couldn't be here today, Anna Horton, and the Institute for Medical Education for inviting us to speak, um, our advisors, Angel Palermo and Dr. Factor. Um, much of the research that we presented on knowledge and attitudes gains um, was initiated by the work of the former MedStart directors, so we just want to thank them as well. Um, and they were also a vital support to us throughout our year as directors. And finally, we wanted to thank um, the Mount Sinai Auxiliary Board and the, all those who helped provide funding support for the 2011 camp. Um, thank you for your attention. I know we've run a little bit long, but we're happy to take uh, questions if you, if you have them. Thank you. My congratulations to the two of you. I have one question. In the summer program, do you bring in the five or six students per week, or do you bring the whole group in at one during one week? It's, it's all during one week. Usually it's held the week right before second year medical students start class, and so we have 65 students at once, mostly on the 13th floor and in some other areas, and so they're usually about 12, 12 teams of five to six students at a time. Yes, Dr. 
That's a, that's a good question. I mean, I, one of the things, you know, I said not all of our students come from East Harlem. That's probably the primary selecting factor. There is no, not, nothing in our application looks at um, their grades or academic performance. That's not something we, af we ask about. It's really just basic demographic information. But because we want to work with East Harlem students, that's, you know, that any student who applies from East Harlem pretty much gets in. But we do always have a waiting list um, of students who, who apply. Um, but really, we just work with local schools, and they, they recruit students. Sometimes, you know, guidance counselors may, you know, find the students that they know would work well in the program and who'd be interested. But it's really, we don't, we don't look at scores or anything like that. Um, all right, that's fine. Um, it is, uh, it, you know, it's, but with the week-long program, we just do the survey at the beginning and the survey at the end. Um, we try to keep them pretty brief. You know, we dedicate maybe 20 minutes or 15 or 20 minutes in the first morning and 15 or 20 minutes in the last afternoon. Um, we also do, we didn't mention this, we do have uh, end-of-day surveys that aren't about research, just about feedback. So students do complain about the amount of, <laughs> of paperwork that they have to do, but we think it's important, I mean, not only for the research, but the feedback and to make sure that we're actually doing what we're trying to do. Um, I think it's, it's a worthwhile, you know, sacrifice to have to have some more, more paperwork. But we try to keep it pretty minimal. Um. And we do use those results to make changes to the actual yeah. curriculum. So if there are particular activities that didn't work in previous camps, we take that feedback into account and either revamp the activity altogether or replace it. So we do take that feedback very seriously. That's, that's something that, you know, we're working on. I know we've been working with, with you all at CUIE to try to figure out how we can do that um, through all the, the programs. Um, I mean, we invite students back each year. You know, we've been inviting students to come as returning campers, and we're working now. I think that's something that we're looking at, you know, how do we continue to follow these students. I mean, we're thinking with this advanced curriculum and something we've also thought about is bringing high school students back in as kind of mini mentors or have them teach something so that we can keep them involved. Um, but it's not something we've sort of figured out. Well, one of the great. things that we're thinking about is to maybe make the, the high school students sort of student ambassadors back to the schools that they're coming from. Yeah. So if a student who has participated in MedStart and has had a great time and has learned a lot and are, they're excited about pursuing that MedStart uh, passion even, through, even though they're high school students and are not eligible for the program, they could then go back to their respective schools and then talk about the various things they learn in the program. I mean, those are things that are hard to flesh out but it's something we are looking at for sure. Yeah, so that's something that there's so much going on in terms of expansion of MedStart. Uh, we really do want to focus primarily on the students and uh, the year-round program is a huge undertaking for our new executive board. So right now we're focusing on that. Um, but we are thinking of, of sort of integrating these uh, caregiver sessions more often either maybe concurrently with the year-round program so that maybe parents would come. Because a lot of the times they would come to the year-round uh, program from 2 to 4 p.m. but not know what to do for two hours while their students were in the program. So we were thinking maybe having a concurrent parent session so that parents would come drop off their kids to the year-round program and then go to the caregiver session simultaneously. So we're addressing both populations at the exact same time. Uh, we will definitely be integrating the caregiver sessions at the summer camp, but we're still working on how to incorporate that during the year. Dr. Beata? Yeah. That's, that's, an, that's one of those areas we're also kind of trying to expand in. And I, I, some of the mentors, um, it's more organic. We haven't, we haven't yet brought in like a real concrete way for them to come back. I mean, when we had this sports and emergency medicine program, we invited all of the summer camp mentors to just come say hello. Um, and, and that was really worthwhile for those students. You know, they got really excited when they saw their mentor. And some of the mentors I know have remained in touch with, with their students, but it's not something that we've really created. Um, specifically. So we're, we're looking at that and maybe thinking about some sort of tutoring, mentoring type long-term relationship that we can build um, into, the, into the program. So that's, that's definitely That's one of our core focus, focuses for the upcoming yeah. executive board. So this is something that will hopefully be fleshed out in the coming months. Yes, thank you. So um, how do you develop your continuity between your, your newcoming executive? The transition? 
question. Yeah. That is a good question because we're sort of right in that point right now. The new executive board, um, you know, comes on in, in around December, and uh, the the directors, Amr and I, you know, we attend all of their meetings as they're beginning the playing stages. I mean, the the, the di people who are the past directors, Ed and Melissa and Sam and Roman, stay involved. I mean, they're still very involved in, in MedStart, and they kind of create that long-term memory. And we have all of the different, like the curriculum directors, meet with the new curriculum directors, and and we have all of the files and every every bit of information that's from the last uh, program. So, so well one of the things we're also focusing on is the distinction between the previous uh, co-directors and the t types of projects they focus on, as well as the current directors. So we really want to give the current directors a yeah. chance to try out new ideas, and they'll, they'll receive guidance from us and advice, but we don't want to shackle them to our ideas in particular. Um, so the co-directors of the previous years focus more on long-term uh, goals, such as uh, writing the comprehensive papers, um, more research-oriented things, while the current directors and that executive board they will be working with these new year-round programs just to sort of get an idea for how MedStart works. Thank you. Oh, sure. I think that this would resonate with the faculty, most of whom I'm sure know nothing about the program, especially the faculty in the clinical department. Yeah. I would suggest that you try to get to see this presentation at Grand Rounds on the various departments. And then get on the program Yeah, I think that's something we've explored, with, especially with pediatrics, I think, right? I'm not sure if that's, <laughs> that's certainly, I mean, certainly we want to spread the word because we get a lot of our support, not even j from the clinical departments. Anesthesiology especially has been, you know, with the human simulator lab. So it is building those relationships is something that I think would help, help the program a lot. So that's, that is a, a great suggestion. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.